students and teachers at Stoneman Douglas High continue to struggle with the school tragedy after the attack, and so do the first responders who rushed into danger. New tonight, mental health counseling isn't always available to those heroes. The night team's Andrew Dembert live in Tallahassee again with this new push to rescue the rescuers. Andrew. Yeah, families are fighting for first responders whose struggles may not always be seen on the surface. Now they're trying to get those brave men and women the help they deserve. Seventeen Julia 5, I have the gunshot victim. The horrific scene is one they will never forget. Can't get rid of this one. This will be uh, with me forever. Police, firefighters, and paramedics struggling with what they saw at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. My wife's the assistant athletic director who works hand in hand with Chris Hicks and who lost his life. Feist was my son's football coach. So it comes on a different level for me. The emotional stress takes its toll. Our first responders have seen things that no human being should ever have to see. Mike Moser was there that day. When it's multiple kids and they just keep coming and coming and coming, um, it's tough. But saving lives comes at a cost. Some responders, police and fire, that went to the call will, will, uh, will be dealing with uh, effects of this for, for the rest of their lives. Living with disturbing images can lead to post-traumatic stress disorder. This particular scene was horrific, but you have a, a firefighter, a uh, paramedic that's been on the job for 20 years. You know, they have 20 years of that built up. Diana Sandell knows how dangerous that buildup can be. I wish this on nobody. Her husband, Rich, a Pompano Beach firefighter for 18 years, shot and killed himself two years ago while she was pregnant with their son. We're not the only family who has lost a first responder to a suicide um, due to PTSD. And it's shocking, the statistics. While some police and fire departments have programs that cover the cost of mental health counseling, others do not, unless the first responder is also physically injured on the job. And families of first responders here in Florida have traveled to Tallahassee to fight for a bill that would make post-traumatic stress disorder covered under workman's compensation, even if that first responder wasn't physically injured. To, um, they testified before lawmakers telling their stories. My husband was uh, one of the first responders that um, was responsible for collecting the 49 victims out of Pulse nightclub. Some lost jobs because of PTSD, Others committed suicide. My brother did take his life. My brother did file a workers' comp claim, and he was denied after two months. Families say this bill is especially important in light of the shooting at Douglas High. Honestly, if it doesn't get passed this year, um, I'm afraid that it might be a Parkland firefighter or a Parkland first responder, Coral Springs first responder family, who is up there next year and the year after fighting for these bills to get passed. And the bill is expected to go to both the House and Senate floors for a final vote on Monday. Live in Tallahassee tonight, Andrew Dimbert, 7 News 19. Okay, Andrew, thanks.